Hi, it's Peter here, and let's get right into the business. What is deadpan photography? The most popular is that a deadpan photograph is devoid of emotion. It simply exists as a subject and, and a photograph, yet it seems empty. I'm in Rovaniemi, standing in the middle of a football stadium. Yes, the season starts in two weeks. Let's go and check out what's there because I, can, I think I see an image. Yeah, I think it works. Why is deadpan photography so fascinating? Deadpan photography challenges everything we know about the right way to make photographs, and that's why it's really fascinating because I always. I'm very excited if someone uh, tries to challenge the, the norms of photography or the rules of photography and try to do something differently and succeeding. And sometimes not succeeding, but trying to new things because that boosts up our creativity. It makes our mind work better if we challenge the conventions that ph photography has. And deadpan photography really does that. Let's look at seven things why deadpan photography makes or, or is so different from the conventional way of making photographs. Simple composition. Look for really simple compositions. We always thought that the subject should not be in the middle. But in deadpan photography that's usually the case. It's just the subject as it is right there in the middle. So make simple compositions and many deadpan photographs have a minimalistic approach to the composition and I made a fo uh, photograph, a video about minimalistic approach in street photographs. You might want to watch that after this video. I will put a link in the description of that video too. So if you haven't seen it yet, that gives you some more ideas about, yes, deadpan photography too, even though it's not mentioned there, but about minimalistic approach, which is very close and what we use when we do deadpan photographs. The image should look calm as possible. Try to crop out the clutter so that everything is very simple and there is no distracting elements in the, in the image or in the area that you are photographing. Flat light. Usually we aim for light because light shapes the object. It gives the form and, and texture to the object. But in deadpan photography we want as flat light as possible. No shadows, no harsh highlights. So make it a simple flat light, so everything is at, as it is. And this is one of the most uh, uh, hardest things for me, because I like images with, with shadow play and lots of light and high contrast. And here we are doing quite a lot of the opposite. And uh, that is something that's uh, really fascinating also, because we do something that is not the conventional way because photography is drawing with light and here we kind of don't want the light and when I'm talking about light is the direction of the light or the shadows that are because there's no light but in deadpan photography everything should be gray and flat so overcast weather is the perfect time to do deadpan photography and luckily in Finland we have that a lot during the winter time neutral color palette. Deadpan photography also needs to be a subtle colors. Black and white photographs usually work the best. You know, low contrast black and white is a typical deadpan photograph. And if you have a color image, try to desaturate the color so to make it more deadpan and strip out the feeling and the emotions from the image. And low contrast. This is something that I already mentioned a few times when we talked about light. Yeah, low contrast. Try not to boost up the contrast so you don't have really deep blacks or really bright whites. We want to image have a lot of gray values without the deep, deep black and the bright white. That's usually the best way. And the same comes with colors. As I talked about desaturated colors, we don't want a really, really heavy color contrast in the images either. So that's also something that is a bit opposite from what I like. I like contrasty images usually and I, I 
boost up the contrast quite a bit when I edit my images. And But this time I had to kind of like take it down a bit and, and you know, not to get over excited about contrast. So I needed to do some low contrast photography. And that is also something to look for the opposite things that you usually do. And that's one of the most fascinating, the beautiful thing about deadpan photography is that it's, um, for many of us, it's totally the opposite that we usually try to do. And before we continue, a few words about famous photographers that has used deadpan as their style or way of photographing. And probably the best known and the most famous is Alex Soth, and especially his work Niagara and also Sleeping by the Mississippi, which is the book that I have. And, and it has lots of images that are center composition, no real big emotions, and uh, flat colors, desaturated colors, flat light. So it's, you know, if you want to look into who has made some really interesting looking books and interesting uh, stories with deadpan photography, Alexov is the one. And then there is, of course, Andreas Gursky, who's Probably the most famous photograph is this Rhine, which is a typical deadpan photograph. It is in color, but very subtle colors and very simple composition, almost an abstract image. When you look at it, you don't really realize what it is. But his photographs has been selling with huge, huge amount of money. So take a look at his photographs. Then there is the couple Bernd and Hilla Becher, who actually invented the deadpan photography. And... I made this image inspired by their style. This is the way they did. They photographed old uh, industrial areas and uh, made images or set of images like this. One big canvas and like nine or six, six or nine images. And I took street corners here in Rovaniemi and uh, made a similar type of, of image or presented the images the way they did it in, or the Becher couple did when they photographed the industrial areas in Germany and France, I think they were doing that. So this is a typical way of presenting the deadpan photographs. Something that I've never done before, but it was it was a fun experiment to, to mimic someone's style. And this all takes me to consistency. When you're doing the stuff that I did uh, and, and inspired by Becher couple, try to be consistent and when you're making the compositions, don't use any fancy camera angles or play any any you know turning the camera or use anything like that just walk in straight in just straight in front of the whole thing that you're photographing and photograph it as it is with low contrast with flat colors with flat light and you have a photograph that has a deadpan style i did that a lot on the on my trip to rovaniemi but i also found this and made some images of my favorite things is street art and this time I saw this parking garage which had a lot of well pretty good murals or graffitis or I don't know what you call these and uh, it's very hard to photograph them as deadpan because I always want something to happen and uh, so so someone is interacting I only to be honest, I only got one image that I'm happy about and, and this dog that I saw in front of this mural of a dog. And I, I like this image. This is the type of, of things that I like to do. But let's go back to the, the garage. This image here is, you know, kind of like a deadpan image of that. It's just there, flat light, straight on photograph, symmetrical composition. This is kind of like a deadpan representation of the mural no emotion and this is something that is really uh, bothering me in a way that we try to detach the motion from the image so so that the the viewer doesn't feel anything or and and that is something because i always talked about how you should make images that people feel something about they react they have a m motion when they see the image there is a story but with deadpan you kind of strip that away it's just photographed as it is without any emotion which is as I said a bit mind-boggling to me because I think photography is all about emotions and telling deep stories and so that people feel something when they see and they start thinking about their own story related to their own lives or or their experience how the image is interpreted 
But in deadpan, we try to rip that out. And one thing is, or one way to do that is to detach yourself from the subject. You're totally neutral. You just walk towards something, take a photograph, walk away, and no fancy thinking about camera angles, colors, and, and you just, it's, it's really hard to explain, but it's, it's really revel, uh, revolutionary in your mind when you, when you start thinking totally differently. And that's, that's what I like about deadpan photography. And that's why I actually made it. And here we come to the whole point of deadpan photography. It challenges your mind to do things differently. And sometimes when there is a dull weather and you don't feel, you know, really pumped up because of the weather, try deadpan photography overcast weather when it's cloudy just go out and walk and photograph everyday object you know like the parking meters against a gray wall concrete wall or you see something like the hat here or you see a bicycle like here just photograph and make a set of images do the street corner thing or, or something similar doors for example or windows or something and make a kind of like a set of deadpan images and I think that would boost your imagination and of course when you go out photograph the stuff that you usually do and then switch your thinking between that too that that will really boost up your creativity it did for me I was very inspired to do that I had some fun in the Angry Birds Park too so it wasn't that dull and not emotional thing. I felt really good when photographing. What do you think about deadpan photography? Have you ever tried that or are you going to try? Is this inspiring you at all? I did enjoy the flat light and the overcast weather and desaturated colors and you know a bit misty weather but then the sun came out so it was a good time to head back to the hotel, have something to eat and have a nap. And here is the video about minimalistic approach in street photographs. You might want to watch that next if you haven't seen it yet. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.